Hello, and welcome back to our Bible study of Reflections in John's Gospel. Today we are going to be discussing John chapter 4, verses 1 to 42, which is the story of Jesus uh, meeting with the woman at the well. The story in and of itself is a rather straightforward uh, narrative tale with little bits and pieces of uh, teaching within it. Uh, what we see is that Jesus, when he is um, confronted by the Pharisees in Judea, he leaves there and he departs to go back to his homeland of Galilee. And to do this, he passes through uh, some, some Samaria. And uh, Jesus and his disciples stop at this place, at this well, and uh, the disciples go off to get food and that Jesus is there by himself. Now, into the story comes this Samaritan woman who comes and Jesus asks for water. They have a conversation about uh, water and living, and living water. And then there is another uh, conversation about her life, uh, the fact that she has had um, five husbands and that the man she's currently with is not her husband. And then we get to uh, talking about uh, worship, and there is a, a realization from the woman that this is someone who is a prophet, someone who is uh, special. At this point, the disciples come back, and they marvel at his conversation with this woman. And the, the, woman, the woman leaves and goes off into town uh, to speak to the people. And the disciples r remain behind and are urging uh, Jesus to, to eat. And uh, Jesus is saying that they, that they don't understand what's going on, that uh, he has other uh, food and drink. And he, there is a discussion about, about mission. And then a bunch of people from the town come with the woman and they begin to believe and ask Jesus to remain with them. Now, in those, that basic outline of the story, uh, what we see in the, in the story it's itself, there is a lot that we can unpack. There are a lot of uh, issues that come to the fore in this passage, various uh, parts of it. And I'm not going to get into all of the issues that we see. I'm only going to, to briefly uh, bring up some of the, the points that come out in this passage. Because if I didn't, I would be here for uh, quite a, a long time. The uh, first uh, point which we have to make is that Jesus, in his conversation with this woman at the well, is crossing a great deal of uh, uh, cultural and societal barriers. Um, what we see are three different barriers that get crossed. And the first one, the most obvious one, is that Jesus is uh, having a conversation with an unrelated female. Um, that this is not uh, usual. And, and this is not some secret conversation. This is out in the open that Jesus has this conversation with a woman. Now, on top of the, the uh, gender barrier that we see, there is also a, uh, I don't want to say racial barrier, but a cultural barrier between the Jews and the Samaritans. It is a national barrier. Now, throughout history, there are very uh, distinct um, differences between Jews and Samaritans. And it goes back to the destruction of the Gerizim Temple in the uh, era of the, of the Maccabees and the Maccabean Kingdom. And uh, the differences uh, between their uh, scriptures and what they believe in, and where they where they where they worship, and the fact that the Jews would consider the Samaritans to be uh, inferior in their faith, in their be belief, and in their background. So what we see is this uh, divide, and as as uh, John himself writes in verse nine, it says. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. That's why when we talk about the parable of the good Samaritan, good Samaritan would seem to the Jewish people as a, an, an oxymoron, 
as a term that doesn't make sense. So Jesus asks this Samaritan woman for a, a drink of water, to ask her for, for that. And it's important for us to, to recognize those two uh, barriers, because they are barriers that Jesus crosses uh, to begin this conversation with the woman. But later on in the conversation, we get to the third of the barriers that we see. And that third barrier is the ethical barrier. That this woman is has been married five times, and we don't know the disposition of those marriages. We don't know if she was widowed, if she was di divorced. Uh, we don't know how that... Uh, how those marriages ended. But what we do know now is that she is uh, living with a man who is not her husband. And uh, for a woman in this circumstance, and, and we can uh, talk, of, talk about how the woman ended up in this circumstance, and, and that's uh, one aspect of it. But in this culture, she is um, tarred with the idea that she is living with a man who is not her husband. And that brings with it the, the scorn of the community. So the fact that Jesus is not only talking to a woman, and not only talking to a Samaritan woman, but also talking to a sinful Samaritan woman, a blatantly sinful Samaritan woman, well, however she found herself in that circumstance, those are three barriers that, that Jesus begins to cross as he starts this, um, this message. Now the uh, conversation between Jesus and the woman is marked by uh, aspects of confusion. In fact, chapter 4 is filled with, with, with uh, misunderstandings about different, different things. And we see the, uh, the woman has uh, two main misunderstandings and then the disciples have a misunderstanding as well. Now, the woman's first misunderstanding is about the, uh, the living water that Jesus promises. Jesus promises living water and says that everyone who drinks of this water, of this water in the well, will be thirsty again. But the water that I will give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And she asks for this water, but she asks for it in a physical way. And what Jesus is looking at here is he is harking us back to, especially to Isaiah 55, to this living water that comes from God that is a refreshment of our spiritual lives. But Jesus is asking this woman to, is to believe in him that he is able to refresh her spiritually in a way that she perhaps does not even uh, contemplate is possible. So from there we move on to the next uh, con con confusion, which is the confusion about worship. Uh, after she has been uh, found out as a uh, sinful woman, she changes the conversation to talk about, about worship and where the proper place of worship is. Again, her confusion is confusing the material for the spiritual. Now, this is the same confusion we saw in John chapter 3 when Nicodemus, who was a teacher of the law, came to, to Jesus and was confused from the physical, between the physical and the spiritual. So she's asking about where the proper place of worship is. Is it in Jerusalem on Mount Zion or is it in Mount Gerizim where the Samaritans worship? And Jesus makes it plain and clear that salvation comes from the Jews. But he also makes it plain and clear that the day will come when the physical location of worship will not matter. It doesn't matter whether it's Zion or Gerizim, that those will uh, drift away in the presence of true worship, which Jesus says is in spirit and in truth. So this idea of true worship is another important part of what this woman is trying to, to get across. And what Jesus is trying to say is that there is this wonderful spiritual aspect that goes beyond uh, the physical uh, boundaries of the temple and of the mountain. That we can have this new relationship with God. 
that is not bound by geography or not bound by, by place. And that, and that true worship is not defined by where you worship, but true worship is defined by how you worship. And again, that is drawing us back to the words of the prophets, the prophets who were always um, condemning the Israelites for their, uh, for their false worship, that they would worship with their hands with their with their their hands and worship with their words but their hearts and their actions uh, in private uh, were not the same as their uh, physical uh, worship itself that they would do the sacrifices that were necessary but they wouldn't have the sacrifice in their own lives that was needed so when the disciples come back we get to the third uh, major con con confusion that we see. And the third confusion is a confusion about mission. Now the disciples are asking Jesus to eat. Now they had been sent off into town to, to get food. And they come back with the food and Jesus tells them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. That's verse 32. And they begin again to confuse the physical for the spiritual. They say, did someone bring him something to eat? And Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. And he begins to talk about his mission, his work, the work that he was sent here to do. And that is to uh, reap the harvest that is out there. He says that the fields are white for harvest. That there is an opportunity here to proclaim the message that they've been given. Now the disciples probably don't see the opportunity because they think of the opportunity as being only for the Israelite people, for the Jewish people. But Jesus sees an opportunity here to proclaim his, me his, his message and his mission. <clears throat> and so the disciples don't see that. But Jesus has already sent uh, the woman away to go into the town to begin to talk about and to ask the question, is this the Messiah? Can this be the, the Christ, the one that we've been waiting for? And so while the disciples are uh, confused about what the mission is, the, the woman has already gone off and begun to fulfill that mission by drawing people to Jesus, drawing people to Jesus because of what she has been telling them about what he said. And then they come and hear the message for themselves. They begin to spend time with Jesus. And they say that this is who we've been waiting for. And they ask him to, 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 to stay with them. And so he stays there for two, for, for two days. And it says in verse 41, and many more believed because of his word. That Jesus saw the mission that was there and he needed to, to stay. And he's beginning to, to, to draw his disciples into that mission, that they begin to be less confused about Jesus' metaphors. And the proclamation begins, and many more believe. And, says, and it's no longer, it says, because of what you said, uh, woman, but because we have heard for ourselves. So what we see here is that the confusions, and these confusions will continue throughout uh, John's Gospel, that there's always this uh, confusion between what is the physical, material words Jesus says, and then the... Um, the spiritual meaning that is behind it. So what we see here is that Jesus is, is drawing people to this new way of living, new way of understanding. And Jesus' way of, of, of doing this is to uh, confront the people with this idea that we have to worship God truly and God will provide for us this uh, living water and that our mission is to proclaim that, that, that message once we hear it ourselves. To be as it is like the woman at the well, to go and to bring people to, to, uh, to Jesus' side. 
So those are a few of the points that we have drawn out from John chapter 4. There are so many uh, points that can be drawn out, so many different aspects that we can look at. Um, if there are other, um, if you want to uh, think about the, the uh, 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 national aspect of Jews versus Samaritans, there's the, the feminist aspect, and there are so many other uh, ways to look at these scriptures. But uh, the points I've brought out today are perhaps the, the most uh, crucial ones regarding the confusions that we see and the way that Jesus answers the confusion of his disciples and the, disi and the woman who becomes his disciple. So let us pray. Lord God, as we approach you now, we want to uh, gather in your presence we want to not be confused by what you have to, to say to us. We want to be drawn nearer to you. And so, Lord, Lord God, as we look out at this world, we, we know that it is ripe for the harvest. So, Lord God, send us out that we may bring uh, to, to, to you, bring into your presence those who need to hear the message of eternal life that is ours in and through Jesus Christ. Lord God, continue to guide us in our ministries, and guide us in the way we, we, must, we must go. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Next time I will uh, conclude the, uh, the message on chapter 4, which will be uh, the second of the signs that Jesus puts forward, uh, which is the healing of a official's son.